Hey guys, what up? So just another busy day in the life of Chris Hawks. This video, I just feel like rambling and talking about stuff. So I'm going to talk about the fact that I'm about to hit 100,000 subscribers pretty soon. I'm at 95,000 now uh, or close to that, some, something like that last time I checked. And that is awesome. So thank you guys for your help in getting me there. I know it's taken me a long time to get to 100,000, but you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> Um, so this video, there, there's all kinds of different things. Like I said, I'm going to talk about in, in, a, in a rambling type format. I do need to go go ahead and um, uh, touch base with you guys. Every so often I have to reach out to you and just let you know I get an overwhelming amount of comments and questions and things of, of, uh, that people are asking me. Um, and I've been so overwhelmed that certain things, like I just can't even respond to them over the last like six months. So I'm doing the best I can on that. Uh, but I just want to make sure you guys know that I'm not being rude. I'm simply just over overwhelmed. And you guys will probably be like, well, Chris, how many fucking que uh, questions and things do you get? And uh, it's really, there's no like specific amount that I could say every single day, but you're talking about like 700 videos and 700,000 views or something like that last month. So uh, that is just simply for views that got viewed in a particular 30 day stretch. And then those generate questions and comments and things that have to be sifted through. And then you get the questions and concerns and everything that, that reach directly out through your email, through the channel. Um, and then I get stuff from like sponsors, from companies asking me to work for them, from companies asking me uh, if I know people that want to work for them and other YouTubers asking me to interview and stuff like So just no offense. Sorry, guys. Fucking I can't handle it. Um, I'm trying to do what I can. It's not like I'm trying to turn down money, but right now I'm just a little overwhelmed. But that's just that's just what we do. So I'm going to answer a question that a lot of you guys have asked me, whether or not I think AI is going to take our jobs in the near future. And the answer to that question, I think, is, is the, the answer is no. I've read some articles about Google coming up with some artificial intelligence, some machine learning you know, techniques to uh, create a bot that basically creates its own API. So basically this artificial intelligence robot or machine learning code base is uh, creating the API instead of the engineers. So immediately everybody was like, oh, look, Google's already doing this shit. Like it's going to completely out, um, uh, kind of completely replace us and things like that. I don't, I don't really think so. Kind of like with the self-driving cars, one day we're going to be there. We're not there right now. As far as artificial intelligence, like completely learning how to do things uh, better than we can, like basically creating a solution to a problem better than we can. Clearly a, a solution can be programmed using machine learning and things like that. But to, to actually just like have an artificial intelligence machi machine and just basically say, OK, build me a fucking laptop or something like that's just not that's not feasible. It's not it's not something that, that I've seen anyway. I, I would be very, very surprised. So I'm not concerned about it. But that brings up the point of are we getting too many people flooding into the market, whether it's boot camps or college and things like that? Are there too many people entering into the market in I.T.? A lot of people will tell you there's too many people overseas, whether it's in China uh, or India that, that are bringing over massive amounts of talent or just competing overseas. Uh, and that programming is now just like, it, it's definitely a competitive, uh, a globally competitive industry and it's not going to get any easier. And with all this, uh, this increased workload, you know, or workforce, are we going to see less demand? And I think the answer to that is probably, Yes and no. Um, so with, so I don't want to get into politics or anything like that, but uh, yeah, so I'm not even going to get into politics, H1B and all that stuff. Clearly competition is good in, in many cases. Uh, in most cases, competition is good. So I, I don't see myself being replaced by overseas developers and things like that. I feel like I'm not the best programmer in the world, but I, I'm, a, I'm definitely a senior programmer. I've had other people tell me like I'm a great programmer. I don't think I'm a great programmer. I, I think I'm a decent programmer. But if you're a decent programmer, then I don't think you should have any worry at all about your job being replaced by some you know person, whether they're in the United States, assuming that's where you are, or they're in some other country. Just keep trying. Just keep like in my last video, you keep working hard. You're going to get there. Focus on the technologies that, that are right in front of you. Focus on technologies that are going to get you a job uh, or that are that's going to complete a project for you so that you can get a job with that. Uh, not everybody wants to be a developer, though, so I understand that. One of the interesting things about this channel is that there's a lot of people here that aren't necessarily 
computer programmers. They don't want to be a software engineer. Uh, they don't want to be a software developer, an engineer. They, they simply want to use coding to be able to apply that to their business and, uh, and, and find ways of being able to make money. With me, uh, I was able so and, and, and I've seen other people learn programming simply as a hobby to assist with other hobbies. So a lot of that sky is falling mentality, uh, it can be brought into the self-driving cars. Like a lot of people said, okay, as soon as we saw self-driving cars with Google and some of those ugly cars that were like the, the first models that I'd ever seen come out, everybody thought like, okay, we're not going to have any cars anymore. Like the insurance companies are going to go out of uh, business. Eventually that stuff does happen. Like you see the printing press. There was obviously massive amounts of jobs that involved uh, the printing press, and that goes out of uh, out of date eventually, and those jobs end up getting consumed and uh, and sometimes just completely done away with but like basically society is always going to find a way of being able to create more demand and i think with it the demand is like it's non-stop i mean there, there's there's always some website out there that's using some newer piece of technology not even just a website there's always some library piece of code that's using some newer te- uh, newer standard newer library newer concept, whatever, sometimes just reinventing an older concept that we kind of forgot about or really didn't forget about, but just didn't really widely use it. And we kind of reinvent that wheel and we use it. But the thing is, is that we're constantly reinventing. So we're, we we have to relearn stuff all the time. And I've said that that is a bad thing sometimes because it means that we constantly have to learn. But the more you learn, the faster you learn. And as long as you can devote some time to learning, it's best to have a job that actually pays you to, to learn uh, and provides, you know, at least a few hours a week for, for self-study and stuff like that. Some jobs do, some jobs don't. I would definitely recommend you try to find the jobs that do. That way you're getting paid to learn uh, and not, you know, devoting all your time away from your family and things like that um, to learn how to code. But th- but basically the fact that, that IT and tech technology changes so much, like I'm not concerned about us reinventing how to, to, to build a view model. You know what I mean? Like how many fucking times have we decided – that we need to re completely reinvent how we're, we're dealing with view models, you know, like, but anyway, yeah. So we're going to constantly do that. And, and, and we can do that all, all day long. Cause honestly, like I can go in there and I can learn just as well as other people, most people anyway. Uh, some are going to be smarter. Some are going to be dumber. It, it, like you'll find where you fit in that whole, uh, that whole scheme and, and, and be careful, I guess, saying smarter and dumber. Some people are smarter and dumber just depending on the day of the week it is. You know what I mean? Like I've seen some people uh, that have said some of the dumbest things and like, I'm like, dude, has this person ever programmed a day in their life? Like what they just said doesn't even sound like they even know what a computer is. Like it, just terrible things. But then, you know, depending on the day of the week, like maybe, I don't know, but it, basically that same example of, of the person I'm talking about, I've also seen him write some excellent code, things like that. So it's like, whoa. So yeah, the self-driving cars, everybody thought we, we were going to completely um, see an entire industry go out of business. But then just recently, Uber had a, um, a self-driving car that actually killed some lady in Tempe, Arizona. So uh, Uber is now pulling, pulling in on their, their robotic or self-driving uh, vehicle program. And it looks like they're going to end up scrapping that. Uh, after this, uh, because this this isn't the first time a problem has has occurred, um, but this is definitely the most serious accident involving Uber's ro- robotic vehicle project and, the, and this poor woman being killed in Tempe, Arizona. Now, with technology and IT specifically, people ask, well, do I go to college? I'm never going to be able to answer that question for you. I would probably say if you can go to college, go to college, because most companies aren't going to hire you without that college degree. Now, some are going to take the risk. Most companies, once you have experience, and, and like in my case, I, I started my own business and created my own websites to create that that experience to show to a business to get my first job. And then from there, I was able to get a lot of you know uh, education in the workforce. And then once you have that, uh, that, that, that work history down, like you, you just, you're good to go. But but a lot of you guys will ask me if you go to college or not. And, and the thing is, is like, I think that going to college is going to get it's obviously going to give you a much easier time finding a job in the STEM field once you graduate. I've also talked to many uh, IT managers who will say that, you know, the college, college degree doesn't prove anything as, as to whether or not you can code. But it does still lessen the risk of hiring somebody that completely doesn't know what they're doing which happens quite a bit. And the average person being placed in, in an IT position 
in the United States, I think is somewhere around twenty thousand dollars or so for a company. Uh, that's about what it pay a company has to to pay to pay recruiters to find IT talent to bring them in, um, and to uh, and, and to, to get them started basically is, is, is anywhere from like 20, 20 to 25,000, I, I believe, uh, somewhere around that on average. But that's why companies don't want to hire the wrong people. So if they're going to be able to lessen their risk of hiring the wrong people by just going with the college degree criteria, then it's a little bit safer for them, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to hire better programmers and create better products. Uh, but yeah, so I can understand both ways, but the thing is that that uh, that sucks with with college is, is just how expensive it is in the United States. I have a, a good friend of mine who went to college to become a lawyer, so she was going to college for about ten years, uh, and she's looking at two hundred forty thousand in student loan debt. So, uh, granted, low interest rates on student loan debt, but that's an astronomical amount of debt that somebody had to accrue to just get a degree to be able to get their foot in the door. Uh, and that's one of the major benefits of IT versus something like medical or, or legal. Um, in legal, you got to pass the bar in order to be able to, to practice law. Medical, you obviously have to have different certifications depending on what sort of health field you're going into. With IT, you don't have that. Now, you have all these people with their college degrees that scream that, that we should all be like either unionized or try to have some sort of you know, criteria and certifications and shit. But once again, the technology changes faster than law and it changes faster than the healthcare industry. And we don't need jackasses like that. You know, being at the forefront of this industry, trying to say that we need to treat it as if it's the same field as the medical or legal field. And I think that if that ever does occur, number one, software developers should unionize probably immediately. Uh, I would think because like 50% of software developers out there, uh, according to Stack Overflow, their Stack Overflow 2018, I think it was 53% of uh, developers or something like that didn't have a, a college degree. So you're talking about almost like, I think it was 53, 53%, and I could be wrong, but either way, you're looking at roughly 50% of all the developers out there don't have a degree. And some of those developers that don't have a degree are some of the best I've ever worked with. One of the smartest guys I've ever worked with is an architect. I mentioned him on my channel like a, month and a, uh, not a month, like a year and a half ago, but the dude went to school for art and he's one of the smartest developers I've ever seen. Very pragmatic. His, his, he's always, um, you know, using and operating under the KISS philosophy, which stands for keep it simple, stupid, never tries to use the latest, greatest libraries and things like that. Unless there's an absolute need, you have to convince him of why you need to do it. Um, and then every once in a while, like it, it'll rub somebody the wrong way because they can't use their framework or library or whatever. But the dude's almost always right. He doesn't miss deadlines and he's fucking paid as an architect by a multi-billion dollar a year revenue company to be able to make some major decisions because, like I said, like his, uh, his decision-making skills are just top-notch. Like when it comes to just like almost everything this dude does, the way he implements it, um, it it's always just a very, very simplistic approach, I would say, to programming. And... Um, those types I think are, are relatively rare in this field. And, um, anyway, I've worked with a lot of brilliant people, but he's definitely one of, he's probably the most brilliant person I've ever worked with that, that can take a very complicated subject and then make it very, very simple. Um, simple enough for junior developers then to be able to take it and understand it, uh, and, and then build off of it. So anyway, that's just my thoughts. Like, please don't let, we don't need these, people in our industry trying to say that like we need to be treating IT and STEM as if it's the same thing as medical or legal field. So that's my opinion. If you don't like it, I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, guys, take care. Have a good day. Take care. So this video was brought to you by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. They're a bootcamp that is based out of Utah, but they're also in Texas and Arizona now. And they have very good reviews. So make sure you guys check them out. The link is in the description tab below. They offer courses in web development, iOS development, um, UX or user experience design, quality assurance, um, and just a, a few other ones. In fact, they're even getting into uh, Salesforce as well now. So they're continuing to adapt their courses based on what the market needs are, and major companies are hiring some of their alumni. So make sure you guys um, give them a look. They have great reviews, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.